Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you guys are continuing to enjoy some of my videos and my crafts that I'm putting out there for you guys to see. I hope you guys are able to do them with some of the materials that you have at home. Um, if you don't have some of the materials at home, I apologize. Like I said, I'm trying to think of materials that you may have at home. Uh, but if you are going to the grocery store or maybe to Walmart, maybe pick up a few things here and there like construction paper or markers or paints. Uh, just so that you guys have um, stuff to make things out of. Uh, but like I said, I want you guys to continue to stay clean, stay safe, stay healthy. I hope you guys and your families are continuing to do well. I hope you are also staying active, whatever you may be doing, whether it is making art projects um, with some of my videos or um, some things that you may find online. I hope you guys are also staying active with maybe reading or music or physically staying active, whether it's playing outside, uh, enjoying some of the nice weather. I hope you guys are enjoying some of the nice weather that we do have here and there. I know since we are in the Midwest, like things change here and there. So if it is nice out, I hope you guys are taking advantage of it and getting out there and enjoying the nice weather that we may be having and getting some fresh air. I don't want you guys to be stuck inside all day. So if you do have a chance to get outside, um, take it because in the Midwest we have weather that is unpredictable. Uh, so I hope you guys are continuing to like these videos and I hope you guys are continuing to stay active. Um, also continuing to do your schoolwork. I know some of you may be getting some schoolwork now. I hope you guys continue to do that. I know it's not maybe the funnest thing in the world, but please keep up with your schoolwork, get those good grades, and stay in school. School is very important. Alrighty. So with further ado, let's get started. So today I thought we would do some foil art. So this is um, a foil art that I did and it's not quite finished. Now I didn't finish it because I want to show you the last step of it using my example here um, since it is technically like dry now. When I first did it, it wasn't dry and it was actually like coming off. That's the thing with this project, you may have to wait for things to dry, um, even if you are just using marker. Um, marker needs to dry too. So with further ado, we'll get started. So I'm gonna turn my com camera and I'm gonna have you guys face this way. So. Where's my stick? Okay, there's my popsicle stick. Sorry, just a second. Oh my goodness. I need a new tripod. Okay. Okay. Sorry guys. Okay. So let's get started. So for this project, you may need, of course, you're going to need some Reynolds wrap or some aluminum foil. You may find this in the kitchen, but ask your parents before using it because um, you don't want to use up all the foil. Now also I recommend if you do have some thin cardboard or like a cereal box, go ahead and use that because it's just like a good support to have for the foil because foil is very thin, it's very flimsy, and it can crinkle very easily. So in order to stop it from getting too crinkled, this would be a nice support for it to have. Now if you just want to glue it to a piece of paper, that's fine too. Um, use whatever you have. Uh, I don't want you to, you know, have to like steal a cereal box. Um, don't do that. Or ask permission first before using a cereal box. Uh, so for this one, uh, I just used a piece of cardboard, foil, and then I used a black piece of paper for, for my background just so it provides some contrast and it makes it pop a little bit better. Now use what you have, use whatever color you like. You don't have to use black. I just like black because it makes my, my color stand out a little bit more and provide some contrast. So 
contrast meaning from light to dark and making things pop a little bit better especially the colors on there alrighty so and then I also want you to, guys to think of an animal that you may want to do it doesn't have to be a cat um, it could be a fish it could be a zebra it could be an elephant it could be a giraffe it could be whatever animal you so choose um, maybe not one uh, like super complicated like a spider um, if that's what you like um, choose something that has some surface to it um, because we are going to be making these different shapes on it and adding a lot of color because I do want you guys to add a little bit of color and also if parents if you're watching if you want to buy a frame for these dollar store has really cheap frames this is a dollar and this would be something nice to put your kids artwork in but that then again I don't want you guys to go and buy it but when this is all over if you want to buy a nice little frame for the kiddos artwork to go in go for it you would just have to measure whatever they choose their background as and cut it to that shape okay so to start off with I'm gonna move that to the side we're gonna start with a piece of paper that is going to be used for the back part. So there we go. There's my piece of paper. Now I am going to stretch out or unroll some foil for myself. And I don't want it no bigger than this piece of paper. Maybe even a little smaller. There we go. Just be careful when you're ripping it because it may rip and you have like a huge gash in it. So just be careful of that. So this is a little bit bigger than I wanted. So go ahead, just take some scissors and cut your foil. No biggie. It doesn't have to be the exact size of your paper. I just want it, want you guys to do give yourself some foil that you can work with. Now, if you don't like all those little crinkles in there, what you could use is like a gift card that you may have, or maybe, hmm, what else can you use? What did I use? Or maybe even like a stick or a, a popsicle stick. You could use a popsicle stick. Just something to kind of smooth out those little crinkles. Let me see. What do I have? What do I have? Okay, I have a marker. So you could use a marker to kind of smooth out. Uh, maybe not. I kind of just use my hand, I think. You could just use your hand. But if you really... Oh, some of my rings <laughs> are scraping against it. Ah, popsicle stick. There we go. Okay, I got a popsicle stick. So you could use a gift card that you may have. And then use the edge of whatever you have. I think the popsicle stick is working quite nicely. And just smooth out those little creases so that way you have a nice surface to work on. See? Got rid of all those crinkles and it's nice and smooth. Just kind of satisfying, I feel like. All right, so next, what you're gonna do, you need to flip it over. If you need to flip it over, do the other side, go for it. Do whatever you like. All right, next I'm gonna spend some time making my animal. So I did a cat for my first animal. I don't know what I'm gonna do next. Um, let's see, what do I want to do? What do I want to make? I think I'm gonna do a turtle. So, I'm just gonna draw my turtle. If you don't know how to draw 
um, whatever you want to make, go ahead and research it maybe. So if you don't know how to draw a turtle, maybe look up, ask parents permission before going on the internet, but ask if you could go on the internet and look up pictures of turtles, or like a cartoon of a, a turtle, if you want to get that cartoony effect. Um, so that, or a tutorial on how to draw a turtle. There we go. So there's just the basic shape of my turtle. I'm not adding anything else. So if you don't know how to draw something, maybe research it, but you could also print off a picture of whatever animal you choose and then trace it, or, or you could glue it straight onto this aluminum foil if you like. That's totally up to you. Like I said, you don't have to. So then next, what you're going to do is you might want to cut this a little smaller. I'm going to cut it just a little bit smaller because I don't need all this other foil now. I just need whatever my image is on. So there we go. Making sure not to cut any legs or tails off. And then just throw away your scraps or keep your scraps for another project, whatever you so choose. There you go. Okay. Now, for those of you who don't have a cereal box to use, what you can do is instead of uh, using a cereal box, you could actually cut along the edge of what you just drew or what you printed, whatever you printed, and then glue your foil straight onto the black piece of paper or straight onto what you printed and then you put that on your black piece of paper, whatever you so choose. Um, I'm gonna use the cardboard as a backing. So that way it's um, less just like you can't rip it as easily. I like using things as a backing and that's why I continue to like show you how to attach things to backs or make uh, or layer things so that way it doesn't rip or crumble on you as easily. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a lot of glue. Add glue all over your foil. There we go. Okay, if you want to spread it now with your finger, you can. Um, get by the edges. So if you want to spread it with your finger, especially along the edges so it doesn't leak out on you, because um, glue likes to do that. It likes to sneak out the edges while you're working or while you press down. So you could smooth it with your finger and then wipe your finger with a paper towel or a napkin if, if you have one. Don't wipe it on your clothes. You don't want glued clothes. All right. Then I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm going to attach it to my cardboard or another piece of paper. You could also just use another regular piece of paper as like a back a backing to give it just more support. This is this part I'm showing is you is just giving your foil another layer so it doesn't crinkle back up. So see how crinkly this is? You could super easy. Just be careful. Don't um, accidentally cut yourself. Um, foil is and can be sharp. So just be careful um, if you are crumpling it or doing other things to it that you may sh shouldn't be doing. All right, next we're gonna cut our animal out. So maybe let this dry first, but for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut because I, I don't have a whole lot of time. So I'm just gonna... But for you, I recommend with any project, if you are adding glue, to let things dry. Okay? Oh no. Okay. Here's a whoopsie that I just made. See that? Yep, I made a whoopsie. So be careful while you're cutting with your scissors. And this is also why you let glue dry. 
because my foil was not attached all the way or didn't dry onto my cardboard and it kind of and my scissors got a hold of the foil so just be careful while you're cutting cut nice and slow it's not a race you have nowhere to be there you go follow your lines turn whatever you're cutting on around or while you're cutting yeah, there we go eh. there we go ah. all right go back to some spots that you may have Ooh. there we go okay going around the head now if you want to cut that black line away you can I kind of like it as a border but if you don't like that black line go ahead and get rid of it you could cut that off you can work cut on the inside of that black line that you drew all right here's his little feet I'm just gonna go straight across those to the side So I have some of my edges sticking up. If you need to smooth some of that glue towards the edges, oh, don't work on your like this paper. Move that up to the side. All right, there we go. Sorry if it's not viewing that well. I hope you guys are able to see. But all I'm doing right now is I'm taking a popsicle stick or uh, a gift card or what, whatever to smooth out some of my foil so that way it's not as crinkly and it's getting the glue all the way to the edges because some of that tin foil is starting to stick up on some of my edges because the glue was not spread all of the way but during this process you might get glue on the surface of your foil go ahead and just rub that with your finger it'll come off I promise but don't rub it too much or you'll get whoopsies like this. Yes. And I'll zoom in a little bit for you. There we go. Oh boy. Okay. So, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. Ah, perfect. Okay, so for the next part, what I'm going to recommend is that you um, get your markers or whatever, like whatever markers you have. I recommend for this project using Sharpie. Now, if you're not allowed to use Sharpie, that's okay. I want you to use what you have and what you're allowed to use. If you're not allowed to use Sharpie or permanent markers, this is a permanent marker. See? Permanent. That's word permanent. So if you're not allowed to use permanent things, don't. Because I don't want you guys getting in trouble. No, no, no. Okay. So next what I want you to do is I want you to kind of separate or kind of cut up your animal in a sense. So not literally cut up your animal, but kind of separate your animal with lines. So we're kind of making some different lines throughout our animal to create different shapes. So this one looks like a diamond, this one looks like a triangle, this one looks like a weird square, this looks like a half circle. So go ahead and try to just make some lines. And cut through some of your image. Go. 
Now you could do a lot of lines, you could do a little bit, of, little lines, you know, you could really cut this into however many shapes you want. You could go over some of the lines that you drew for your turtle already. That's totally up to you. Might make one more. There we go. It's kind of looking like a mosaic or like a stained glass almost. Uh, I feel like this one looks a lot like stained glass if that's what you want your effects to be. There we go. Alrighty. So for the next part, I want you to take whatever colors you want or that you have and go ahead and start coloring in those different shapes. Now just be careful, like try to rub some of that Sharpie off. If it rubs off, it needs to dry. So if, see, I rub some of that blue off with my finger. So some of the markers that you have may need to dry. So just be careful with that. And then stay within your shape with that color. Because we want to switch up the colors, so try to stay in that shape. All right, so I'm gonna use this blue also over here. If you accidentally cover some of the details that you drew, like the eyes or the nose or the mouth, you could always go ahead and go back to that. I'm gonna go to the tail, color that. Go. Maybe the foot, a little blue. All right, and then maybe change it up. So maybe find like four different spots, color those with one color, switch to a different color. So I'm gonna go to purple next. And take your time. You guys got time. It's the beauty about art. You could take your time. There we go. All right, I'm gonna actually this down here. I'm actually go, gonna go back and kind of color over this line because it was a different color. So, okay. Gonna put a little purplish, it's like a fuchsia color I feel like I have here. So fuchsia is like kind of like a pinkish purple. I'm gonna switch it up so it's to some green because turtles are very green for the most part. I'm gonna do his head green. Uh oh, I'm covering his eyeball. That's okay. We'll go back. We'll redraw that. I promise. It's gonna go to his leg. See, I'm gonna go down to his leg. Color that. Now, for this project, if you don't want to do an animal, that's fine. I just recommend, maybe if you can't think of anything else, do an animal. Do your favorite animal. Do whatever animal feels right to you. Um, if you want to do like a family member's favorite animal, if you can't think of an animal that you want to do, maybe ask a family member, like, hey, what's your favorite animal? You might learn something. Like, I think my favorite animal is, ooh, that's hard. I like all animals, but if I had to choose a favorite animal, oof, that's hard. Oh gosh. It would have to be either a betta fish or a peacock. I like peacocks, they're very colorful. Um, all right, I'm gonna switch from this light green to a nice dark blue. Whoa, look at that blue, sorry. That's a nice dark blue. Whoops, I got a little bit on the table. Whoops, I forgot to mention. Maybe put something down while you're working. Sorry, you saw my head. Yep, got a little too excited there. And I colored a little bit on the table. 
So if you are working on a surface that you're not supposed to with certain permanent markers, put a paper underneath. Always work with something underneath, like a paper, uh, like a paper towel or a piece of paper. Or I, at my house, I have an art tablecloth. It's a nice thick one that we had for the longest time. I don't know if we still have it, but that is the art tablecloth. And that we pull out for when we do art projects or carve pumpkins or paint doing painting projects. So we usually bring that tablecloth out for different projects. But for this project, I like I don't need a tablecloth, but who knows, your mom or dad or whoever's watching you may want a tablecloth down. So just, you know, ask like, do I need to put something down first? Or, you know, they may tell you like, hey, put a piece of paper down to work on. So I don't want nobody getting in trouble. or making whoopsies on different surfaces because I don't want nobody getting in trouble. Okay? Nobody getting in trouble over here. All right, I'm gonna switch it up to a different color. Oops, see, I did it again. Gotta hold down my artwork. Yeah, make sure you're holding down your artwork. Take your time coloring. like a hot pink in here. Where'd it go? I feel like this is the hot pink. Whoa, look at that color. Look at that color. That is a hot pink right there. That is a nice hot pink. And I do like how that hot pink is right next to that dark blue. Look at that. That is such a nice color. And how it catches the light. Mm. Nice colors. But for those of you who don't like hot pink, maybe do like a light blue. Some of you may not like the same colors as other people, so that's okay. That is okay. I'm gonna do some yellow. Remember, make this super colorful. Do the rainbow. Get crazy. Not too crazy, because we want to still stay in the lines. But, you know, do a lot of different colors. This is your art project. And you kind of want to do a lot of colors, so that way it catches the light nice and you could do so many different things with it all right um what other color should i do i have this like sea foam green it's very light green i'll put that down here i'm also going to get the hot pink back okay Sorry if I'm mumbling. I'm just, you know, doing my work process. I do like to talk when I do my artwork, or some of you may like to listen to some music, put on some sweet tunes, and make some art. That's what I always do, put on some sweet tunes. You could always make some sweet art while you do that, listening to music. Music is always a beautiful thing. All right. So now what I recommend is you go ahead, put this to the side and let it dry for just a little bit. It doesn't take long, maybe like, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, not long, maybe, maybe just five minutes. Like see, it doesn't really rub off, but like a little bit is rubbing off, especially if you just put it on there like that hot pink. Yeah. So let it dry for like a good five minutes. And I'm going to show you how to do the next part of this one. So, um, if you need to redraw some eyes, go ahead and do that. If you need to redraw the, the mouth or the ears, go ahead and redo that. I might add some little claws to his paws. So, some lines. There we go. All right, now, in these little shapes that we made with the different colors, I want you to think of different patterns or different textures that you could use. So what I mean by textures, you could put like little dash marks to make it look like fur. Or you could do patterns like swirlies or, you know, waves or loop-de-loops. 
You could do some different patterns like zigzags, polka dots, whatever you so choose, or maybe just circles. So we're going to decorate our animal using different patterns and textures if you want to do textures that's totally fine um like if you want to do like scales you could do like fish scales fish scales i kind of do this way if you want to do that if you want to make a cat with fish scales go for it all right so i did kind of like something that was a wave so i went bump 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 now i'm gonna go right underneath kind of where it just curves and i'm gonna go bump match it to the next curve bump bump do the same thing bump bump and then bump so kind of looks like scales right there or you can make fur whatever whatever you so choose but i'm gonna do um more patterns for mine so i already started i did some zigzags in that one i'm gonna do some loop-de-loops in this one You could do a, them straight across, like this, or you could do turn your paper and do patterns facing a different way. So I'm going to do some zigzags. There we go. All right. Um, I'm gonna do kind of like a bullseye around the eye. Here we go. So I'm just making circles bigger and bigger. So it kind of looks like the target dog. If you've ever seen the target dog, it's a target cat. <laughs> Alrighty. So then you're just gonna keep doing this until you cover the whole animal with textures. I know it's a little time consuming. You may be running out of patience at this point, but I tell you, it makes a big difference. It makes it a little bit more detailed. So we're adding details right now. Um, so details are the patterns that we are choosing to put in the different places. So I'm trying to think. So you could do some lines, like little dash lines. If you want to, um, I wish I had a sheet full of patterns, but if you want to look up some patterns, you can. That could also be a texture if you want. What else? Do some stripes. You could do some X's. I don't know. There you go. That's a pattern. Or like squares. And you can repeat patterns. You don't have to think of a different one for each one. You can repeat patterns here and there. I'm going to do polka dots for my ears. There we go. What else? I'm going to turn this around so that way you can see the feet. Let's see. What am I going to do in that green space? Ooh, I'm going to do some swirlies. Some swirlies. There we go. Those are fun. Even saying the word swirly is fun. Swirly. Alright, what else am I gonna do? If you want, you can leave some of these shapes blank. That's totally up to you. You can you can leave some shapes blank if you can't think of anything you could put there. Or if you already have something in that shape. Like for my paws, I may not want to do something on my paws because I have those little claw marks that I did. Or, for example, in my mouth area... I don't really want to put anything there, so you don't have to put anything there. But if you want, you can, but that's totally up to you. You could do X's, you could do O's, you could do letters, you could do shapes. So here I did X's. I might do triangles, like a triangle pattern. Over here on this one, I'm going to do a square pattern. Or just a bunch of squares. Go. Mm, I'm gonna do some zigzags over here.
What else? I'm gonna do stripes on the tail, because those are fun. Okay. Um, maybe some loop-de-loops right here. Um, I kind of want to put something in that blue one, but I don't know what. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to put there. So I'm going to come back to it. I'm going to put polka dots right here by the tail. Hmm. What am I going to put? I think I might put um, little dash lines by his foot right here. His back foot. Just to fill up space. But like I said, you don't have to. I think I'm going to leave this blue one alone and that pink one alone. What am I going to put here? I think I'm going to put X's right here again. So you could do repeats. Go ahead and do repeat patterns. But if you do rec uh, want to do repeat patterns, Maybe space them out a little bit. So if you're doing doing X's over here, are you going to do X's right next to it in that in a different color, or do you think you should go to another shape on the other side of your animal? I recommend doing that. So that way you're spreading out some of the patterns that you have. Um, so that way it's not a continuation into other shapes. All right, what do I want to put in this blue one? I have no idea. I might do the circle. There we go. Ta-da! There we go. Now, I recommend for this project, if you have colored pencils, go ahead and use them. I'm just showing you an extra step that you can take for this project. If you don't want to and you like that, you can also keep it like that. That's totally, totally fine. I just got a, a a great idea, so I might run with it. Um, well, I can't find my other things that I wanted to use with this. I don't know where they are. Oh, they might be in that box. Hold on, just one moment. I thought of an idea. Never mind. Okay, I don't know where it is. Darn it. Okay. So, what I recommend if you do have these at home, uh, not a lot of you may have them, but they're called metallic markers. And they come in a lot of different colors, actually. So there's like a metallic, like rose gold. There's silver, there's gold, there's like this like coppery color. I wish I remembered where I put them, so that way I could show you, but I forgot. Um, but they do come in some different colors you wouldn't think of. You would probably just think of silver, gold, and like copper, but there's like a, like a shiny brown, and there's like a whole bunch of different colors that you could use, but sadly I cannot find my colors or Oh, here they are. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, here's some metallic markers, guys. Now you could order these off Amazon, but like I said, I don't want you guys to spend money. Or I feel like they sell them at Walmart too. So here's like a metallic green, and these work best, I tell you, on black paper. Now, like I said, if you don't have black paper or choose not to do the back part of this with black paper, that's fine. But I'm just going to show you this works the best on black paper. So here's this like rose gold one. Here we go, I gotta hold it up. You can't see it too well, but in here, these colors really pop. Here's like a blue, oops, that one really pops, and they're shiny, 
Kids love these. Uh, and I think a pack of these come with all, all of these colors. Or it could be two separate packs. I can't remember on how I got these, but these are so great. So what you can do on your black background, if you have colored pencils, go ahead and use those as well. You could totally use like a white or even like a nice red for the background. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. There we go. So you could use um, colored pencils too. You could shade. You can't see it that well um, on the camera, but you could shade around or create some nice shading around your animal after you, so I just tape this on. Oops, I ripped it. Okay, so if you want, you could then glue. So since it's not flimsy, it's got this backing on it. You could go ahead and glue it to your black background. Sorry, I totally skipped a step, I'm so sorry. Um, so you could glue it or tape it to your background or stick it in a frame, whatever you so choose. And then you could decorate around it. So if you wanna make some stars, here we go. Or, like I said, use these uh, metallic markers. So what you could do is you could trace your animal. Isn't that cool? And then you could take another metallic marker and you could do the exact same thing. You could do this or you could just decorate with colored pencils or you could continue the patterns that you made on here all throughout your black piece of paper. But I kind of like just tracing my animal that I just made or made prior. Alrighty. See, that kind of looks cool. Now my turtle, so I'm just gonna go back to my turtle since I have time and do some things with that. So for my turtle, since everything's all dry now, I'm gonna go back, maybe add his mouth. Oh, this is not the marker I wanted. Ah, Sharpie. There we go. Little eyeball. And you might want to add like some turtle texture. Uh, I think they have like these octagon shapes or hexagon shapes on their shells sometimes. Turtle shells have like a very um, distinct pattern on them, especially like a, a uh, a sea turtle. They have like an, uh, a very natural pattern to them. The whole shell does. Now see this pattern that I did, or texture that I just drew could be covering the whole thing. Or if you want to add scales, like I said, you could do bump, bump, bump. So it could look like fish scales. You can make your cat look like a fish or whatever you're doing. You can make a dog look like a fish, dogfish. There's actually a fish like that out there in the universe. So just giving you guys some more uh, pattern ideas. You don't have to, you could think of some on your own. You could do whatever you so choose. I'm just giving you some more examples while I still have time. Oh, here's one. So I'm just starting at that corner, making lines outward to my edge of my turtle. And then go ahead and you're gonna make kind of like little bumps. Give some space. I 
Now that one looks kind of scary, because what does it look like? Kind of looks like a spider web if you didn't get that. But you could totally create some cool patterns and shapes and stuff using uh, the different things that you have that I'm teaching you. Or if you could think of other things, that is totally fine. Um, but like I said, once you're done, put that on to a black background. And then you can do whatever you so choose. So for him, I might, him or her, for my little turtle friend here, what you can also do, so I'm gonna put him down here, and then I'm going to go ahead and I might make a tree, like a little, with the metallic markers. Oops. Make a little palm tree. Because he's just chilling in the sun. There we go. Now these metallic markers are so fun. If you have a chance to get some, experience the joy of having them, and experiment with them, great. I would love you guys to experiment with some metallic markers, because I really find them to be really fun. Do I have a yellow metallic? I have a gold, so I'm just going to draw a little sun. There we go. There we go. Maybe give my son a little smiley face. And then I'm going to put some waves in the background. Like I said, these markers are so great to have. They really pop, especially against black background. Uh, if you don't have black paper, it works just fine on white. But these are really cool, so please experiment with these if you have a chance to use these. I like bringing them out once in a while with you guys, or my kiddos, so that way um, they get to experience them. I'm gonna go back to my cat and I'm gonna use gold. So see you could just outline, you can make a little scene behind them, whatever you so choose. And then definitely put your name on this, sign your artwork. Because this looks really cool and they'll be like, well, did you buy this? And it's like, no, I made this. I made this in my art class. You, you will be so surprised with the amount of things that you may be able to come up with or um, if you experiment with some things, you may be able to come up with some other ideas and people will be so impressed by you by just how you learn to experiment with different things in order to create these new awesome things. So just remember, keep experiencing new things and experiment with art because you don't know where it can take you. It could take you to the moon, to the sea, um, to medieval times, whatever. So there we go. There's my turtle. And hey cute. I'm gonna continuing or I'm gonna continue with him again I just have more time and I just want to think of other things that you can put as some texture or patterns
But like I said, if you don't want to draw your own animal, go ahead and research one. There's nothing wrong with that. Maybe print it out if you have a printer. Um, if not, maybe trace it on the computer screen carefully, very carefully. Uh, what else can we do here? But like I said, if you don't like what you draw or want to learn how to draw something, use the internet, but ask your parents permission first before going on the internet, okay? All right, what other? I think I'm gonna do some zigzags. Ooh, oh, he's got lightning. There you go, that looks kind of like lightning or I kind of like that. Some loop-de-loops. So you could also change the way your turtle is facing and try to do some different patterns with the direction that you are going. I might... I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. But I'm just experimenting with different things I could probably do. Trying things out, seeing what looks nice, what doesn't. See, I kind of like did a half zigzag, half line work right there. Um, what else? Could do circles. You could leave the shapes blank. Like I said, it's all up to you and what you want to do. Alrighty. So, I'm going to call it a day. So if you do whatever, uh, work on black paper and you don't know how to write or like what shows, pencil shows up fine on black paper. You might just have to look a little closer. So, like you could see that, but if you want um, things to stand out a little better, you could write in like a silver, there's silver colored pencils out there if you didn't know, um, silver colored pencils, or I, my go-to is always a white colored pencil, especially on black. All right, and there you go. I have my turtle, I have my kitty cat. Oh. Now, I think I mentioned this earlier in the video. If you want, you could also frame your work. Now, the tricky part about framing is that you might want to figure out the dimensions of your work before you even start making it. Sometimes that helps. Oh my goodness. Okay, just be careful. Okay. So this usually comes in most frames and you just have to trace around it. So I trace this to the, at the beginning just to show you, or to show you this part. I forgot I wanted to show this part. So you trace that piece of paper, and then you make whatever you want with the size of your paper where your lines are. So I cut that side off. And then very carefully, you're going to put it face down in your frame and then give it a quick look if you can. Be careful. Let an adult do this part. I don't want you guys cutting yourself on glass, so just be careful. Then if you want to put this paper back, you can, just so it's with the frame. And then go ahead, make sure this little tabby part is facing up with your project, because if you do want to hang it, it has to be facing the right way or facing the right direction, which is up, because that's where you're going to hang it. Your nail or whatever is going to go in that little slot. And then your art is going to be presented like this. So then, after that's in there, go ahead and fold down the tabs very carefully, just like that. See? 
and then the kiddos work is nice and safe nothing will get bent in there everything will still stay nice and um, pressed and neat and it won't get um, destroyed in any way shape or form so you guys might want to think about getting a couple of these at the dollar store if you do get out um, like I said I don't want you to, guys to spend a ton of money with these projects but use what you have use what you have at home whether it's colored pencils um, markers um, sharpies or non sharpies uh, scissors if you have them tape glue use all those good things alrighty so hi me again I hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson I hope it wasn't too difficult or too easy for you I feel like it was very fun uh, and you could do so many things with your animals or you can make a robot since it is foil you can make a robot whatever you so choose I feel like that would be a cool project for you guys to try out um, I just chose animals for this project because that's what I saw as an example online uh, I get a lot of my ideas from the internet so I encourage you guys as my students to um, look for art projects or different artworks on the internet if you are allowed please ask your parents permission before you go on the internet and you could find so many different ideas and inspiration of things to create um, like I said I'm just using some of the projects that I find and transforming it transforming it using my ideas into projects for you guys so if you find something online maybe you might be inspired to do something else with it so I hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, project. I hope you learned a little bit about some textures and patterns and also about some metallic markers. Maybe get some of those for you um, or for your kiddos, whoever is watching, because I highly recommend those. Those are so fun and so like vibrant and colorful. I feel like you could do so much with these, um, not just on black paper, but with other papers that you might have. All right, thank you so much for watching. Um, stay clean, stay safe, stay, stay healthy, um, stay active, whatever you are doing, and remember to keep washing those hands. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.